Good afternoon, Michael. How you doing? You well? I'm doing good, man. You? I'm blessed, my brother. Always in the West. Can't complain. Always That's good, good man. man. You're one of the stars of Prue, um, yeah. which hits uh, screens next week. A comedy about a group of teens struggling to navigate adolescence in a pupil referral unit. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, it's for excluded kids, those who society deem that they can't handle anymore, so they put them in a corner over there. Um, talk about the fact that you're one of the stars of the show, mate. You auditioned for the role over Zoom, um, mm. and things have just gone up since then. They've gone really, really well. I'll talk about that. It must feel good. Yeah, um, yeah, it felt amazing because it's like a first-time experience for me, and obviously because of the whole corona thing we have to do it over zoom normally you'll go to a place and then you do the audition so i think that it was a blessing that it was done over zoom because it relieves the pressure I'm, I'm in my own house i'm uncomfortable to do whatever i need to do and um yeah the whole process was just really good like it was literally straight auditions they liked what i did and then they brought me into film and then from then on it just went upwards and yeah, it was a blessing to be part of the show yeah, I told um, one of the co-writers that it's, uh, you know, probably one of the most real-life comedy mm. balances that I've seen struck for a, for a while. So in your own words, Michael, I don't want to put words into your own mouth. What's it all about, really, Prue? Um, Prue is just about four kids who's been excluded from mainstream school and they're just really trying to get by of life and doing the right things, but... Obviously, in life, it's not always sweet. There's always, you know, feels that you take. There's always um, encounters that happens. And there's things that they can't really control themselves in life. So, yeah, like, it's just about four kids trying to improve themselves and just trying to go on with their lives. And, yeah, there's a few lessons being taught throughout the whole show. Yeah. Your, um, your role is quite, you're quite comedic um, anyway. Yeah. Right, but but the, the, the comedy that you guys managed to, to strike up and foster in there seemed very organic, very real, very easy to manufacture. Um, talk about that, and and I know there were some times offset where it was quite raucous as well. Yeah, so everyone knows me for being a comedic person, so this is a new light that I'm in because there's comedic scenes, but there's also real scenes, and I feel like people like to see the realness from from me, especially because. You know, they always sees me as like the comedic person that makes videos online. So the fact that I'm able to do the serious acting, it shows that, you know, I'm quite versatile and people gravitate people gravitate to that more because it's just something new and it's organic. And yeah, that's really that's all I can really say about it. Talk about working with the rest of the cast. Did you find it easy to bounce off them? Yeah, there's a lot of chemistry with the other cast, you know, with Jay, PR and Ketch, even from the pilot of Kosa. It was just it was just really easy. And I think especially with Jay, like Jay, he's watched my videos before I even met him. So it was more easy to connect to him. He knew how he knew like how I'd move and what I would like and you know, relate with certain things. So, you know, the chemistry of the cast is, is amazing still. Can't lie, it's amazing. You know, one of the things I picked up on in the in the premiere um was you speaking on the fact that so many of of those who were working on Prue, on and off set, on and off camera. Um, it was the first time, you know, getting a big opportunity like that. And you really bonded with some of those people behind the camera. Speak yeah, about yeah. how that helped you to kind of feel comfortable on the on the set. Because I know there were long days and we'll get mm. into that in a minute. Yeah, so the main thing on set when you're not filming and it's not your turn, it's like you can be away for a very long time due to, you know, just technical difficulties or just doing a few new things and more brainstorms. So like, for example, if I'm not filming, I'm not on set, I could chill with people behind set because most of the people behind set, especially the runners, they're young. They're, they're basically the same age as me. So there was a lot of relatable things that we spoke that we spoke about, you know, ins and, in, ins and outs of a few things, you know, just secrets and stuff like that. So yeah, like it was a very good experience and it made me enjoy being on set even more than I already enjoyed in the first place. Do you get it? So, you know, it's a blessing to work around people the same age as me because normally around these big companies and production crews, it's normally like older people and you tend to be by yourself if you're not with the crew, you're just by yourself and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm really grateful that I was able to, you know, just 
enjoy my time offset with people that's the same age and people that can relate to me. Yeah, I can imagine that made it a lot easier. In terms of yeah. connecting with the story, right? Obviously, you, you've spoken about how real it was. Connecting with this uh, role in terms of it being different from what you normally do online. How did you mm. find bridging the talent and, and kind of what did you have to employ that was maybe a lot different, a lot more uncomfortable than normal? Um, so I think when it comes to comfortability, I wasn't really uncomfortable. It was like the mindset, the mindset that I had was was that cool. I'm in a big scale now, but you know, it's the same old thing, you know, there's cameras on me. And I normally do that by myself. So I was in a mindset where, oh, this is this is normal, but it's just that it's with loads of people watching me and it's with a big camera in it. But I think when it came to serious scenes, that's when I really had to tap in because there's been a few times where, you know, my voice is not high enough and my pronunciation's off. So yeah, I think that's what made me really dig deep and to really perfect this character because this character is like, I wouldn't say complex, he was not complex character, but there's a certain way to play the character where you have to like improve yourself, your acting skills, you know, your pronunciations and your facial expressions and even your even like your cadence, the way you walk and stuff like that. So yeah, I think that was just the only difficult thing where, you know, it came to pronunciation and stuff. I know that, um, well, I'm told anyway, that you have, prior to being involved in all of this, you had a great work ethic. Um, mm. And, and I'm, I've spoken to, to various people who um, made some, some important decisions and they told me that that was one of the standout features for you, that you um, you were different, a different animal when it comes to the work ethic and putting in the graft. Um, mm. Speak about you know where that comes from. Is that something you've always had? Have you always been the type of person to put more in than, than normal? Mm, that's a really good question. Like, I've never actually answered a question like that. I think it just comes from, I think it just comes from my family and the people that I'm around, especially like from my brother, because, you know, like, it's a thing where from young, when I'm growing up, I'm seeing them, you know, putting in the work themselves. And I think it was just mentally stored in my head, like, and you have to work hard. And especially nowadays, you have to work harder than other people to reach a certain point or to even reach the same level as them. So I think this is a thing from young where I was like, cool, if I want to do this, I need to work hard, you know, and be calculated and come with a plan. And yeah, I think that's really where it comes from, just from home. Your brother's your agent, right? He's not my agent, he's my manager. He's your manager? Yeah. That's nice, man, that you guys can keep it in the family. I mean, you've already yeah. spoken on it, but, but I guess watching him work and seeing how serious he takes the opportunities that he knows are in front for you that must keep you switched on all the time, right? Literally. And the funny thing is, is that even when um, I got the offer to this for the show, he showed me he showed me the offer, but I think to myself, oh, it's just, this is really like, BBC is really real, is like really worth doing. But then he actually persuaded me to actually just go on because I've, I really have nothing to lose at that point. So, you know, Really and truly, with a lot of things that's gone on, he's helped and yeah, he's just been an important person in my life and even in my career. Yeah. Yeah, long way that continue, man. Love to see that, man. Um, Thank you. One of the questions I really want to ask you, because you touched on it, you, you told the story anyway. So I was, I was, I was really, I was really quite amused by it. As hard as you work, you, mm. you're known to drop asleep, right? And. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, yeah, yeah. at the premiere, you don't you not speak on it anyway, because I've heard it's one thing to drop asleep when you're not filming, but brother, I heard that you fell asleep during filming as well. Yeah, yeah. It was one moment where I think I think we we're on the roof or it was the canteen scene where like because normally, normally whilst you're on set, yeah, they're setting up um the whole structure of the of the area that you get. So I think this is a thing where like they were just taking a bit too long and then I thought to myself, let me just, you know, just close my eyes for a bit. And then when they say, yeah, really score, I'm up already. And, you know, normally with me, I don't, I don't, it's hard for me to sleep early, you know, because I don't really um, live with a schedule. So every time I came back to BBC to film and I'm on the schedule, it's a thing where like I have to prepare to like sleep at this time and stuff like that. So, yeah, I think that's like one of, that was the most difficult thing. 
with me. It was just um, prioritizing my sleeper schedule. So, you know, there's been times where on set, I'm really tired, but as soon as the camera's on that, like, well, you have to like pattern up and do your best to really intrude. So, yeah, there's been a few times when I've been sleeping and, and yeah. <laughs> Nah, to 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 your defense, I know that there was a few days where you, or more than a few days where you started at five a.m. Right? Um, mm -hmm. Them days can be can be long. Mm -hmm. A word on the co-writers, you know, because I know that they had first-hand experience in mm -hmm. dealing with crews, and they and they they clearly brought that to this, and and I think that that's what helps, you know, the authenticity as well as the performances that you guys deliver. Um, the synergy that you had with the co-writers though, and, and I heard that they were on set quite a lot more than maybe co-writers would normally be. How was it for you? It was really supportive because them being on set, they're seeing their writing come to life. And there was a lot of times when the writers would give us freedom to, you know, say our opinions to them or just like, there's been a few times when we added our own little, our own little joke, like inside joke into the scenes to make more organic and, just to make it more easy for us to flow through the scene together, especially with the chemistry that we already have, it makes it even 10 times better. And it's just that with them being there, it shows that, yeah, they really want us to work and they really believe in us. So, you know, for them to give us leverage on, you know, certain words to change or a dialogue, it's, it's really, it's really good. And it shows that they really trust us with their own show and the writing that's going to be on TV. So, you know, I'm grateful for Nathaniel and Alex really and truly, man. God. Have you got a, a particular, you might not, you might, might not want to share it, depends, um, scene or moment throughout this four episodes, right? From May 26th. Mm. So have you got, have you got, is there one particular scene or element of the show that you want to share with us that you were quite proud of or with jokes or you had issues with? I think, I think, it's the it's the it's the scene in episode three when we go um, camping. I don't wanna I don't wanna like give yeah too yeah much yeah, to I yeah it's just it's just a thing where you know there's a scene with me and Ketch you know Ketch that plays Sienna, and it's just a moment where a friend is opening up to another friend, and the thing that I open the open up about is 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 quite it's quite major in today's society so. You know, I feel like that scene it shows, you know, the realness between friends when they're going through something and they want to, you know, tell another friend that they're feeling this type of way. So, yeah, I think that scene stands out the most for me. But there's a lot of scenes. There's a lot of scenes that, you know, I'm keen on to see. But I feel like with that scene, it shows, it shows the realness that's not really shown on TV that much, especially with young people. And that's what Cruz really all about. That like, Cruz shows moments where, it will hit people where it will be like, right, I actually, I've actually been in a situation where I know someone has been in a situation. And that's a good thing about the show, something new, because on TV, you don't really see that much, you know, vulnerability with young people on TV, it's mainly just sort of adults or just with just other things going on. And yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the remaining two episodes. I've fortunate enough mm -hmm. to have seen the pilot um, which is available now for everybody to go and watch in the first two episodes mm -hmm. I saw at the premiere so I'm, I'm excited to see the last two we're all hoping it gets commissioned for another series right yeah you must be as well 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent, man we want we want six we want six I swear, I'm only joking what team you support Michael man you but I don't even watch football anymore man I'm, I'm done with that man I, I stopped watching football like two years ago really and truly man yeah it's, it's, it's peak for you man right now so yeah. what team you support Tottenham so you know <laughs> <laughs> bro I can't even talk though like, I can't even talk about this season but you know what I mean but more time you can still but yeah it's, it's, it's peak for us yeah, too man. man if we finish in the top four it'd be all good listen we digress Michael, it's been a pleasure talking to you, my brother. I appreciate you and, and more success. Is there any, if, if we don't get another uh, series of crew commissioned or in the meantime, mm. what would you like to be getting up to? And talk a bit about what you do away from this for those who don't know. I know you've got hundreds of thousands of people following you and your mm. name where, you're, where you roam and you're in these streets. But talk mm -hmm. about like, you know, uh, what you'd like to get up to, maybe even using that, the platform you have now or more active. Um. You know, my plans for the future right now, it's just to really go 
go ham on my work because really and truly, 2020 was the year where I was going like fully, fully hard with my content of, you know, making content, correct, making content ideas and just doing it with my friends. But I feel like from, 20, from 2021 up until like maybe Feb 2022 this year, I haven't been really been able to focus on my own thing because, you know, with the filming and this other things are last. So, you know, this year I'm free and I just want to really focus on my content and, just, you know, make good videos of, you know, me and my friend Dylan and my mates with us as well. So I just really want to focus on my craft really and shooting and see where that takes me because even in 2020, I didn't have an idea, I didn't have no idea that I'll be in the BBC show. And, but my work was able to get me into that position. So, you know, hopefully my work, you know, I'm able to venture out to this new things to be in, things that just make sense, like how this show makes sense for me to join in. Yeah. Tell people where they can find out more about you, man, all the socials. Um, Instagram, MB Bents, YouTube, MB Bents, Twitter, The Real MB Bents, Snapchat, The Real MB Bents. Literally, MB Bents on every type of socials, you'll find it. Even on TikTok, The Real MB Bents. <laughs>